Ewan, how are you investing and how are you navigating this negative yielding world? Well, I, th I think you need to distinguish between um, investors who are needing to invest to meet uh, a financial obligations, so liabilities, pension liabilities, insurance guarantees are given in the past. And unfortunately, when rates go negative, it's still the reference rate for, uh, for um, liabilities of that nature. So if you're an insurance company, you've given some commitments, you're obliged to meet payments out into the future and rates go negative, you're a forced buyer of, uh, of bonds to, mm -hmm. to hedge those liabilities. If you don't hold them, you will have to hold a lot of Solvency II capital to mitigate against the fact that you're not fully hedged. So, um, so there's a lot of people being squeezed into those bonds. But my, my, my question is, what role do they serve for modern savings products? So uh, a lot of people, as we move away from uh, defined benefit type pension entitlements, a lot of people would have had a guaranteed level of pension linked to their final salary, for example. We've moved away from that now for a decade, obviously, and, and most people now younger than about 40 don't have any defined benefit pension entitlement it's all about defined contribution bonds in that setting where you know they're responsible for their own liability it, bonds used to be what you bought to provide income yeah uh, negative yielding bonds are clearly not fulfilling that purpose and so my view is we're going to have to build portfolios from assets that actually produce income so equities still produce really attractive income, but if you're going to invest in equities, you have to defang equity volatility. And then the other income producing assets are private assets, real assets. And if you invest in them, you do get income, but you have to deal with the fact that they're not liquid and you have to persuade clients to invest in something they're not going to have daily liquidity with. But I think those are the two sources of being able to build yeah. sensible, savings and retirement propositions in the future but it's not where people are at the minute so 80 90 percent of our population are in investment strategies that have worked well but they're not going to do the job for them as we look forward into the into the future you and do you expect um, time is against us here so in a minute do you expect a, a, a pivotal moment of pushing back against negative bonds is there going to be a seminal moment in the bond market that we're not anticipating um, I think I think there there might be. I think I think central banks might might struggle without you know ever expanding balance sheets to control the long end of the market. I think I think central banks do have a lot of power at the front end to pin the curve at uh, at the front end. It's the longer dated um, bonds I think they'll struggle to control. Mm. So um, so they can keep it negative, I suppose, at the front end as long as that's their, that's their policy choice. But persuading people to tie up their money for 10, 15, 30 years at you know, close to zero, maybe even below zero at the front end, uh, you know, at the 10 year point, that's going to only, you, you need to have you need to have forced buyers okay. in order to do that. So as liabilities diminish um, and you have modern type savings products, you wouldn't need that.